Lynn Brown, I want to show you something that a lot of people wonder about because no horse magazine would ever print a story on it. It's called the Corrector Patented Weight Distributing System Made into a Pad to Solve Saddling Problems. They would never do a story on or the Black Saddle Company either, even though it became the largest salary in the United States, if not the world. And it uh, seemed like I scared the heck out of the uh, other saddle companies because I was doing more business than they did. This little device I invented after I shut Orthoflex down. I did not sell Orthoflex, I shut it down. I thought that it had rather seen its day and it was difficult to use. I wanted to make something that was more traditional, easier to use. But the first thing I wanted to do was to make something for the horse. Putting the horse first was our logo, our motto for Orthoflex. I still own Orthoflex Saddle Company, so if you buy something, if you purchase it online, you'll see a receipt from Orthoflex Saddle Company or Lynn Brown's Innovations. I also own Black Mesa Saddle Tree. But let's get back to the corrector unit. The corrector is an amazing little under pad. Not too thick. Cut open in the middle with an elliptical cut. That elliptical cut lets it open and close. When the back is down or when the back is bending, this elliptical cut closes. I invented, I made the first contoured pads in the saddle industry. John Lyons started using them. Professionals Choice hopped on the bandwagon after that. But this becomes a contoured pad when it's needed. It becomes a straight pad, a flat pad, so to speak, when the back is up. When the horse bends and turns to the left, it closes on the left. It stays open on the right. That keeps this pad from being scooted all around when the horse is bending, turning, and moving as the back is coming up and down two inches or more every stride in action. When you get on a horse, the back comes up three quarters of an inch to an inch just when he tightens his stomach. When he reaches with the hind quarters, it comes up even more. The further they reach, the more the back rounds. The idea of bridging is a sales tool to sell you a saddle tree that drops down into the relaxed back. When you get on to ride, you have a problem. It looks good on the ground when he's standing. When you get on to ride, the back comes up. When you start riding, the back is up more. At a trot, it's up a good inch and a half to two inches all the time. Then your saddle is rocking off the center. That gives you white hair in front. That gives you fluid under the skin that causes the white hair. A little excessive pressure, movement, creates fluid under the skin, white hair. You do a whole lot of this, you'll slip hair. You'll have an open sore, things like that. Real saddling problems. The corrector prevents a whole lot of these with the shields that I've molded to the shape of a horse, basic. When I say basic, they're not molded to this horse. This is a little 15 hand mare. They're molded to a good sized horse with a great all around back, one of 27 or 30 horses that I had at the time. I guess it was 27. And the shields set right here and right up over the shoulder, the front shields. They are basic shape of a horse, they work on a mule as well. They work on the round back, they work on the very hollowed shoulder and wither area by just simply having the ability to do this. As you can see, they have a little, like a little bubble. So they'll bend that direction for that old horse. These shields are made out of 10th inch thick aircraft interior plastic. They're cut and molded to shape. First they have to be cut and then they are molded to shape on the mold we use on all of the corrector shields. And the sh corrector shields go into a finished full protector pad. The little corrector unit here 
is the underpad that you use that saves you a lot of money because you use it with a pad that you now have over the top of it. This goes against the horse. Any padding under it can create a problem. If it was anything more than a quarter inch thick, it would really create a problem. It would also bind up things under the pad to where it doesn't have the ability to move with a horse as well. So back to the shields, front shields and rear shields. They are slotted. These slots line up right here for a soft spot. They line up through here. They're smaller at the end, and then I made them larger as you go in. So I removed material here, giving it the ability to have a soft spot and a solid shield. It lets it bend right there. So as it, even if I hold it back here where saddle tree will, it wants to bend, it bends fairly softly. But it has tension in doing such. You have to have some firmness, some stiffness to keep the pressure spread out over a large area. There is as much area in the shields of a corrector unit, front and rear shields, as there is in a complete saddle tree. Actually, there's more area in these two shields on each side, all four, than there is in a typical saddle tree. So you don't have to worry about bridging in the first place. It's ideally, if your saddle looks like it bridges, that means you have room for the back to come up because it comes up the most right here. The front shields, I've explained those relatively well, but the uh, idea is this is a flexible lever. So when you put a saddle tree on this shield, you have the shield sticking out the front and it's being bent upward by the shoulders. If you use it too far forward, it will be flexing. As the shoulders rotate and the body bends, it will scoot this tree back out of the way of the horse's natural movement, whether it's bending or the shoulder rotating and creating the bulge as it does. The shield then will be moving the tree out of the way and holding it out of the way while it's protecting the shoulder. Nothing else has ever done this. What it's doing is positioning your saddle where it should be. And once it's positioned where it should be, guess what? The way saddle trees are made today, they drop, they're a little wide and they will drop down in front when the back comes up and you go to ride. That's not good. So I make balance shims that go under, on top of the shield, under the tree to lift the saddle to balance you. These are not to fit the horse. Some people ask me, but if I have front shims and rear shims, won't I have bridging? And I say, I hope so. Because if you don't have a little bridging, you can have rocking off the center, which works up and down in the front, so on and so forth. The shields protect from a lot of this in the first place. The shields in the corrector unit, which we're going to slip back up here. Show you the rear shield right quick. Molded to the shape of a loin. Why would I go to the trouble of molding something to the shape of a horse's loin? One good reason. This is to protect from the outside edge of the bar, biting in as that horse bends and turns. Now, it has to move with the horse as well because gluteal muscles contract and they lift the saddle up in the rear. So they bulge a fair little bit when they contract. See how this bends very gently here front to rear? It takes no tension at all, no pressure at all to make it bend like this to move with the horse. But you cannot bend it this way because it's a gentle arch. The slots are cut to where they let it move with the horse, but it is very firm here to where it doesn't let the saddle tree bite in. That's what the rear shields are for. When you use balance shims, you are using them strictly over these shields. They do not extend beyond the shields. 
Wrong shot. The balance shim goes on top of the shield. The horse doesn't feel the shim. What the horse feels is a balanced rider. It's no longer pushing against the stirrups to get back in the comfortable part of the seat because you use just as many as it takes to lift the saddle up to balance you. That's pretty simple to figure out. All you have to do is ride it with none, then ride it with two shims on each side in the front, which is commonly needed in about 75% of all saddles and horse riding situations. Uh, the rear shields and shims are to go ahead and lift you up. Get the right one here. Oh, I had the right one. Okay. So they go on top of the rear shield. They don't lift you up. They fill up space. Excuse me. The rear shields are filling up space in this tree that's too curved for a horse's back. When you're riding, the backs mostly become pretty straight. Some are very straight, and even a lot are rounded. So where you have no contact, the horse is moving back and forth, you'll have loin rubbing with no contact to speak of back there. Pick up your contact, you often stop the loin rubbing. But by using the front shims, oftentimes you are sitting the saddle down a little more in the back, and it may fix your problem without the rear balance shims. So that is the basics of what's inside the little corrector unit. And uh, again, we'll put a tree on it. This is a born mule tree, the saddle for the born mule that I make, born mule saddle. And you can see what happens when the body moves here. Too far forward, and what does it do? Keeps moving it back. The other thing you can see is what the rear shields are doing with the outside edge of a bar. When the horse bends is when you really can use this if you're riding at speed at all, like barrel racing, roping, and so on. Now, about saddle trees and so on, I won't go into all that now. But it's nice to have one that does not pinch or bite or have any contact on the wither, but that has the contact on the lower half of the bar in front. That's what holds the saddle up. There are very few balance shims needed with my trees. Even this little 15 hand mare has a seat that's going to balance quite well without any shims with this unit. You can't use shims with a corrector because there's no way to really attach them. That's why I build this whole system into the protector pad where you can slip the balance shims in under the top layer of the pad, over the shield. And uh, it is, how do you then make the corrector work? How do you lift the saddle up in front to balance you? I'll show you. I'll explain to you, I should say. One inch thick pad under a saddle and a saddle tree. Lifts the saddle in the rear one inch. It lifts the saddle in the front one and a half inches because we're adding that one inch layer onto two 40 or 45 degree angle sides. Then you are multiplying 1.5 to 1.75 to one, how much lift that one inch creates. And in the rear, it's such a gentle, rounded area, there's little difference. One inch is going to be one and tenth or something like that. Up here, it's going to be one and a half to one and three quarters that your saddle comes up with the one inch pad. This little unit has three eighths inch felt on the bottom, tenth inch thick aircraft interior plastic, and eighth inch felt on top. You can multiply, it's already right at a half inch, you have plenty, a little over a half inch in actuality. So if you add a pad that's a half inch or less, that's all you need. Too much more, you create peaching at the wither because your trees 
are not wide in the gullet like that one and narrower at the bottom to hold the saddle up in front. So you, most trees today are hitting up here with contact. Well, as we lift it up, we'll alleviate some of that pinch with the balance shims. That's the second question people ask. Won't the extra padding cause pinching? They are dropping down away as you add them. So as you add balance shims, they're stuck in a pocket. They drop down and away from the top and create a little space up here to help stop the pinch of a typical saddle, a typical saddle tree. This is the corrector pad, and I'll show you real quick what it looks like in a protector pad. Right here. The protector, let's get the liner on the horse here. Protector is cut the same way. See it drop? Where do the balance shims go? Right inside here. You can see right where my hand is. That's where the shim is going to ride because it's cut exactly like the balance shims are cut there. They slip right in here and they're held in place. Then for the rear, they do the same. They go right back here. There's a pocket sewn here to hold the rear shims and the front shims in place. They go in just like that. It's not hard. Quite easy. If you have a little difficulty getting the front shims out, undo your liner pack. Just like this. That opens up the front clear to here to where you can reach up under there better. And uh, if you want to know how to use the liner pad and take it on and off, you're looking at me. I'm taking it off right now. There's your liner pad. You never have to wash your protector pad. So the protector pad, I send all of them out with the saddles that I make to customers that have ordered them without the fleece. Because uh, the fleece never gets wet. It doesn't break in. It's a lot of fluff. It just has no localized pressure with these shields to bite through the fleece. So only on the kind of skinny, bony horse would you want to order the pad with the fleece, in my opinion. And uh, when you get it without the fleece, you get just a little thicker felt, a little better felt on the bottom. And you can see where the shields are sewn in place. Right here, right here. And the bottom layer. Top layer is open for the balance shims to go on top of the shields. And then in between there is a layer of nylon netting. So this is as, quote, breathable, less heat transfer through the slots as well as through the rest of the material here. That is polyester felt, stays dry, quite dry, doesn't get soaking wet. So I think I've uh, explained in as short as I can video here the corrector unit itself and the protector that has the protector pad that has the corrector system made in it. This is a patented system, a utility patent. There is no absolute measurements. There's no absolute materials other than what it takes to make this concept work. And it's been out there since 2005. You've never seen a story on it because they don't want to upset the apple cart of the typical Western field, selling you something that doesn't work so you can buy another one next month or next year or 90 days the saddle pad wears out the felt has got a hole in it where you've been riding a whole lot and it's just dished out. These last for 10, 15 years. I still have people using some of the originals from 2005, 2006, and 7, and so on. There's thousands of them that have been sold. They keep people from buying saddles. They get to use the old saddle they have. And unless you're a highly competitive and a field like barrel racing and roping and reining and so on, unless you're in a field like that, it's most important to have a, a saddle that works 
when you're not in that field to keep you safe. Because a horse learned to buck to get a predator off his back. So this is a safety feature for the rider, <laughs> comfort feature for the horse. Lynn Brown, thank you very much. Try the corrector pad sometime. After you do, you'll probably be ordering a protector pad. Good day.